Welcome, guys, back to another special edition here of the Sebi Podcast Show. My next guest today is a former Pac-12 Pac superstar and has been a member of one of the more explosive teams in the NFL. Marcus Wheaton is here with us today. Marcus, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you having me. What's going on? We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, first and foremost, um, obviously, this year has been unforeseen circumstances. There's been a lot that's been going on uh, through COVID and, and Black Lives Matter. As in terms of you and your family, how you guys have been? Um, fortunately, we've been good. Um, a lot of my business is done right here in this office. Um, my wife stays home. She takes care of the kids. She homeschools the kids. So um, outside of us not being able to uh, do much extracurricular, right. it's been pretty much the same thing for us. So, um, I mean, the way the way um, we're set up, the way we're structured, it, it hasn't been much of a change. Hasn't been much of a change at all. That's yeah. good. That's good. Awesome. Um, obviously, you're, you're, you're a Phoenix guy. You grew up in the desert. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about that in the childhood. Um, hot, you know, man, I, I live in a very hot state too, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where, where are you at, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, well, we're from Orlando, Florida. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's, of course, drier out here, a lot drier, and it's hot as hell. And uh, what's crazy is I, I never realized how hot it was until I left to college um, um, and then came back and, and couldn't stand the heat. So, um, of course, in the summer, it gets up to um, 116, 117. Uh, we've had 120 days. Um, and somehow, some way, making my way back to Phoenix. So, um, I love it. Right, right, right. Um, talk to us about your early childhood years. Um, obviously, you know, um, you were a sprinter. You were a two-sport athlete um, in high school. You also did track and sprinting and also played football as well. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. I mean, I tried to be a two-sport athlete. I, I did what I could, you know. Right. Um, I played a little basketball, too, um, but it got in the way of football, so I had to cut it out. But um, ran track, ran the one, two, and four, um, ran on the relays. Um Got second in state in the 400. That was that was my main race. Uh, but I, I really only ran track for football, right? Football is where my passion was. That's what I enjoy doing, and I want to be the best at it. Um, I'm a, uh, <laughs> you think in your prime growing up, you could take Usain Bolt and Tyson Gay, any of those guys, or not really? You're not up there yet. Uh, I. <laughs> Them boys on a whole nother level, but I did <laughs> nationals though. I won nationals, um, 10, 10 year old and 12 year old. I, I won nationals in the 400. Um, and then got second both years in the one and two. So I was, I was running, you know, I was, I was running, but that was, that was my younger days. Uh, of that course, I got older. Day. It was more about football and uh, kind of slowed down a little bit, but, uh, was fast enough. Right, right, right. It, I always find it interesting. There comes a time, and like in your junior and senior, you got to pick a sport, right? Yeah, and then, yeah. and then you got to follow that. So I know that must have been a, 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 a tough decision there, too. Absolutely, because I love – my dad played basketball when he was younger. So that's where his passion was, and that's where he always kind of pushed us, me and my brother. Um, so we played ball. We played basketball freshman, sophomore year. And then, like you said, junior year, it's like, you know what I mean? It's decision making time. So, <laughs> so yeah. we uh, of course went with football. We both love football, and um, and yeah, went on from there. It happens when you see all those scouts and uh, those recruiters start coming, and you really gotta, really gotta make sure you make a decision there for sure. Um, you played both sides of the ball, and in high school, you played offense and defense. Um, talk to me a little bit about that, and um, you know some of the excitement uh, that you you had, and um, maybe even some of the challenges too. Uh, honestly, in, in high school, man, it was, it was, it's, it's fun. It's, it's all fun and games in high school. You know, it's, it's all fun and games. It's you playing with all your boys, um, and you out there trying to win games, no matter how you can do it. Um, luckily we were, um, we were, we had a lot of flexibility on our team. So right. we were kind of moving around, playing a lot of different positions, um, just doing stuff on our own. Our coach gave us a lot of freedom. Right. Um, so that's what that's what made it um, 
a lot more fun than than uh, in college or or in the pro. Um, uh, I mean, playing playing high school football, you know, you know how it is. You 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 really out there playing with your boys, right? After football, y'all hanging out. Everything is is fun and games. Um, and then you go to the next level, it gets a little more serious. Um, so that that um, that is something I miss about about high school football. Now, now even in, in high school football, um, did you know by the time that whiteout is, is is what I wanted to do? I didn't want to play defensive back or, or any any other position. Was that something that you totally knew, or did you have to be with trial and error and try to figure that out too? No, honestly, I I was such a competitor. I I feel like I still am, right? Whatever I can compete in, whatever you want to compete in, I'm open to competing in, right? And and that's how I was on the field, coach. Like, yo, you want to play? You want to try this? I'm like, yeah, I bet. You know what I'm saying, coach? You want you want to try this? I'm like, yeah, I bet. I can do it. You know what I'm saying? So really, I was just trying to make plays, right? No matter where I'm at, I'm trying to make plays, right? I'm trying to win, um, and I didn't care where I played to do it. Right, right, right. That's awesome. Now, fast forwarding, you went to Oregon State, obviously. Um, you were first team all Pac-12 your senior year. Um, um, you had a great career, obviously. You and Sean Mannion, um, also with a guy by the name of Brandon Cooks um, as well, who was teammates with you. Um, you guys had one of the more explosive offenses at that time. Um, talk to me about um, being in that offense and kind of like the freedom that, you know, yourself and some of the other playmakers had. Um, the, the year before, so 2000, I want to say 2012, we got up to number seven in the country, um, probably mid-season, a little later in the season. Um, but the year before, we, we were 500. So we lost every other game, right? I think we were under 500, actually. Um, so coming to that season, it was my senior year. Um, me, guys like Jordan Poyer, um, who plays still in Buffalo now. Right. Um, we kind of – we kind of um, – led the charge, man. And and we weren't, like I said, you, I'm a competitor, right? And that's, that's it that we did last year was not finna happen on my watch. And, and he felt the same, right? And the other captains felt the same, right? So we kind of put our foot down and, and led the charge. And uh, man, it turned out to be a crazy season. Guys like Brandon Cooks emerged and went crazy. Um, we had Storm Woods in the backfield, went crazy. Um, Sean Mayne, of course, went crazy. Yeah. Uh, man, it, we put up some crazy numbers on offense, had some monsters on defense as well. And uh, I feel like collectively we all grew together and, and was able to do something special. What, what, what's so different about being in Corvallis, being in Oregon State? Um, what's the significance when you, when you put that jersey on and, and you're known as a beaver? You know, what's the difference? I mean, you, you see other schools like Clemson, you see other schools like Alabama, rich traditions and stuff like that, whereas Oregon State may not have the same uh, aura as that. But being out there, it, talk to us about how different the vibe is. Um, one, it's, it's the underdog mentality. You know what I'm saying? You come in and nobody expects you at Oregon State to do much of nothing. You get what I'm saying? And us being the competitors that we are, having the, the mental mindset that we had, right? We, we took on that challenge and we embraced it, right? And it's a small, still a small, small college town, right? So everybody's bought into football, right? They shut down everything around the city for football. So we felt like Corvallis was our city, right? So we had to, we had to carry Corvallis. Um, and, uh, again, after my junior year and, and sophomore year and, and the things that we saw those years, there was no way in hell we was going to let that happen again come our senior year, our last time being able to do this. You know right. what I'm saying? So um, I think that's the mentality that, that they still have to this day. They, they haven't um, been able to, of course, um, get to where they want to get to, but they're, they're locked in. They'll make it happen. For sure, for sure. Um, you brought up two names, uh, Brandon Cooks, obviously that we know now. He's kind of bounced around the league, um, a member now of the Houston Texans, and also Jordan Poyer. Um, uh, he's he's a member of a team that probably is in Super Bowl contention right now with, with the with the Bills. Um, talk to us about those guys because I don't think people know how good Brandon Cooks actually is, and and how underrated a safety uh, Jordan Poyer is. Yeah, so talk about those two guys specifically. Both super underrated, like you said, um, and. That's normal. We came from Oregon State. Like, that's exactly what we faced there. 
right. right? Brandon Cooks, if you look at his numbers that he's put up in the NFL, is unreal, right? But he still doesn't, in my opinion, get the respect that he deserves. Um, Jordan Poirier, likewise, right? You look at the numbers that he has put up, the numbers that he's putting up now, no way he shouldn't be in the Pro Bowl every year, you know? Um, but again, every year we come back, we don't get the respect we deserve, we got to go chase it. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, we have a Sean Reynolds, one of my best friends, played DB at Oregon State, ended up doing some stuff in the league, but same thing. Um, I, I feel like, I feel like uh, going to Oregon State, you, you take on that challenge, right? And you know what it is. Um, and those guys definitely did. And they were a part of that group that, that, that stepped up my senior year, even though Brandon Cooks was uh, a young pup. He was well beyond his, his, his years um, in maturity um, and work, work ethic. And you know what I'm saying? And if it wasn't for him, honestly, I can say I probably wouldn't have put up the numbers I, I put. I know I wouldn't have put up the numbers I put up, right? Because I'm feeding off of him. He's feeding off of me. And we chasing each other. We're pushing each other. You get what I'm saying? And, uh, of course, when we get out on that field, you can't double team both of us. Nah. So it, it, it got real crazy real quick. Let's let's fast forward here to your your pro career now too, uh, with the black and yellow. Um, obviously, you know you come from an underdog tradition in Oregon State to now one of the more powerhouses in the NFL with the Steelers. Um, and, and it's fascinating that you said you fed off of of his success. Well, when when you got to the league, you had guys like Martavius Bryant with you. You had guys like AB, who is probably you know probably the best wideout in the game at that time, and and you flourished under that offense with Big Ben and Mike Tomlin and stuff like that. So how did it feel um, being in Pittsburgh and um, being part of the Terrible Towers? I, I, I know the vibe must be electric. Oh, man. It's a beautiful thing. You come out the tunnel and everybody's swinging their towels, but it's nothing like it, I promise. Um, but again, um, well, my mindset was, yeah, I got drafted. Yeah, I'm out on the field, right, playing against um, some guys that I done looked up to for a long time that I didn't study for a long time. Um, but there was still guys around the league, guys I got drafted with, guys on my team that were better than me. You get what I'm saying? Um, now there's no envy in me, you know what I'm saying? It's all love, but again, I'm chasing what I'm chasing, right? Um, and mentally I'm trying to be the best. So um, again, me having those guys around me made me better because I'm looking at AB and seeing what he's doing. And I'm like, okay, bet I gotta get better, right? I'm seeing some of the stuff that Martavis is doing. I'm like, okay, Martavis came in after me, right? So it was a, it, it was the same kind of like the same situation I had in 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 Corvallis. He came in after me, but his ability was fuck was through the charts. Right. You know what I'm saying through the roof. So again, I'm running from him. I'm chasing chasing a B. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think with that mentality, no matter no matter what level I get to. Right. I'm always um, seeking growth. I'm always looking to get better. You get what I'm saying? Um, so with being amongst uh, all the terrible towels and the lights and all that stuff, yeah. it's still a crazy grind on the back end of that. You get what I'm saying? When, when, when following football at the time, I thought that, you know, they had you play the X, you know, in, in that slot position. And I, I thought that you were arguably one of the more um, – underrated slot receivers in the game at the time. Um, obviously, you had some guys like Cole Beasley, you know, Julian Edelman, a, a team, a rivalry that you guys have always had. But what you, what you did in the slot provided, you know, A.B. to be one-on-one -on -one or, or Le'Veon, you know, to do his thing and stuff like that because the, the defense had the game plan and there was so much attention by Ben, Bell, and Brown that you started eating. And I'm like, you know, this guy, you know, Marcus is not getting the, the the love and the respect that he deserves and stuff like that. And, and talking about that, having that chip on your shoulder, being and standing that you know you had other guys in that locker room or in that receiving court that was better than you, that you still had that motivation and that 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 internal drive to be better. Um, and that's that it speaks a lot. Thank you, thank you. And it was it was definitely a well oiled machine. That, that offense, it was a well. I believe we were number one in the, in the league that year. Um, but it was, it was a well-oiled machine. It was, you can't double team anybody really. Um, um, 
like in Seattle, we went to Seattle one year and they tried to double Martavis and, um, and AB, right? And the middle's wide open all game. So I went for 200 yards that game. Yep. You know I mean? So um, it, was, it was definitely a well-oiled machine. It, you kind of had to pick your poison. Yep, for sure. I remember that game. It was a national televised game too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Mike Tomlin, let's talk about that. I, I think that, you know, there's coaches that are good at scheming. There's coaches that are good at X and O. And then there's just like downright coaches that are just leader of men. You think about that locker room, you, you look at uh, uh, Tomlin's whole body of work, never had a losing season, but not a lot of people talk about how the man is just, you know, locker room guys just love him and they, they want to play for him because that's just the camaraderie and, and the cohesion that he has with the players and stuff like that. So I want to get your personal experience with, with, with Mike because, um, you know, a lot of guys that I'm cool with, I've heard various things and all of them are very good ones. Um, I believe, I believe coach T is a, is a, is a, a well-rounded coach, right? He, he doesn't lack in any area. Again, my opinion, he doesn't lack in any area. He knows how to communicate with players. Um, a, a lot of us players come from, um, less than ideal situations, you know, back at home, right. And where he grew up was, was similar. Right. So he, his communication with the players are, is, 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 um, is impressive. You know, it's, it's different than, than if you get a, a, a coach that, that grew up in a different area that can't really communicate the, the, the way you would like to communicate, if you get what I'm saying. Um, and he's extremely transparent, which I feel like you don't see much in coaches. Right, coaches generally beat around the bush and, and try to keep everybody happy. And Coach Tomlin, he, he's gonna tell it like it is 99% of the time. Right. And I feel like I feel like he gets a lot of his respect from the players in doing that. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely there for sure. You guys have some great seasons um up there. Um potent offense, one of the most explosive offenses in the league that long. But for some reason, you know, I, I need the T here, Marcus. I need the T. What what was the the friction in the locker room between A. B. Brown and 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 obviously, you know, what happened at the end? They they kind of s split up. But I mean, they they had the nickname the Killer Bees for a reason, because I mean, you you know firsthand of how how good those guys were. But what what was what was the reason that they they, they it just didn't work out? Because I thought that team was just. They're all right there to win in a Super Bowl, and um, you guys did underachieve. But um, I, I thought part of that was because of things that was circulating inside of that locker room. I can tell you one thing, and this again, my opinion: we 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 should have won a Super Bowl the year AB got hurt. Right, going into the going into the playoffs, AB got hurt. Vontez Burfitt took a uh, took a shot on him, knocked him out the game. Right then, we didn't have AB for the next round in the playoffs. Right, and we still went head to head, and 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 damn near took down uh, the Denver Broncos, who went on to win it. Right, so we had our, our we're missing our best player, mind you, and we this close from you know what I'm saying taking them down. Again, my opinion, but that relationship between Ben and AB, that that jump, it, <laughs> it runs deep, man. It, it all. <laughs> it, what's, the it, tea? what's the tea what's the tea it, it runs deep it, it was it was a love hate it was a love hate relationship right it was a love hate relationship uh, ben doesn't put up those numbers that he puts up without a b again my opinion a b doesn't put up those numbers that he puts up without ben roethlisberger you know what i'm saying that's just my opinion but <laughs> you get in that locker room and it's like it's, it's really hard to read. It's really hard to read because then it's hugs, right? It's hugs and then it's side glares. And then, you know what I'm saying? And then it's a little beef over here. Then it's a little, then it's love. So it's, I don't even know what to call it. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what to call it. But whatever it was, they made it work on the field. You know what I'm saying? Which was most important. They made it work on the field, regardless of what was going on in the locker room, regardless of uh, uh, how much they was beefing or how much they wasn't. You know, um, they got on that field and they finna they finna play ball, right? So, 
the the only thing that I could find comparable to that was um, back in 04 when when the Eagles went to the Super Bowl. You know, they had an explosive offense, kind of similar like you guys. They had Donovan McNabb. You guys had Big Ben. They had Brian Westbrook. You guys had Bell. And then, of course, they had T.O. Arguably, you know, he's going to go down as one of the all-time greats. But that friction in the locker room between Donovan and, and T.O. is kind of similar to what A.B., it, it kind of like how you explain it, between A.B. and Bell. Because, yeah, they got to the Super Bowl. We know that, you know, T.O., was hampered that that year in that Super Bowl, but he still caught nine balls for a buck twenty two, right. and you like, okay, but you, you you hear all these noises in the locker room of, you know, Tio's toxic, Tio's doing this, Tio's doing that, this mm-hmm. this and that, and then after ball games it, around the media, you see a different side of Tio. You see the the exhilarating Tio, always joyous, always want to talk to the media, being a, a clown, a team clown, and stuff like that. So. I think uh, thinking about that now, it, it's kind of comparable to those two. Absolutely. And I, I feel like Coach Tomlin, the, co- the marriage between Coach Tomlin and Antonio Brown is, in my opinion, why A.B. was able to, to be himself and produce the way he produced, right? Because he, he gave him a lot of leeway on a lot of uh, things. Let's just say that. He gave him a lot of leeway. Right. But also his production on that field was crazy. Right. So he's like, A B, B you, but we need you. You know what I'm saying? I need you. I need, I need 10 for 120. Right. We get off the field, A B do some things that he shouldn't do. He like, bet, A B, B you, right? Slow it down a little bit, but we need you, you know what I'm saying, to go crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I feel like that marriage, that that kind of give and take that he had with A B made it work. It made it work. Over, over the long haul. Um, but um, I don't know, man. I, I feel like, I feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel like, uh, no, nah, I just, I just leave it at that. <laughs> I know you want the juicy. I know you want the juicy, but I'm going to leave it at that. Enough said, enough said, enough said. Um, let's talk about the current team now. The, the, your, your, your team, uh, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, 11-0, and you know, one of the best defenses. At one point, they were, you know, t- number one against the pass, number one against the run, elite defenses. We know, like, historically, the Steelers have always had great defenses. Mm-hmm. Talking about Bud Dupree to T.J. Watt to one of my favorite players they have now in Minka Fitzpatrick. And then all of a sudden, injuries started to come in, right? You get Bud Dupree out. You get uh, Devin Bush out. Ryan Shazier already retired. The back end is starting to get banged up with, with Joe Hayden. So and 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 now the running game is an issue because when James Conner was running the football very good early on, now the running game is kind of non-existent. So moving forward to the playoffs here, do you think some of these issues are they fixable? Are these issues that are able to be tweaked, or what do you think the Steelers are going to do? Um, honestly, I, I don't think you can call it at all. Right on the outside looking in, I don't I don't feel like we can call it, right? Because we don't know we don't know if uh, if we can move some guys around and make certain things work, right? Because we don't know, or me personally, I don't know the the, the threes and the and the possible fours that can come in and 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 hold their own, right? I don't know how they're gonna scheme to protect certain weaknesses, right? Can it be done? If it can, I'm sure Mike Tomlin will get it done. You know what I'm saying? Again, he's one of the best that we've been able to see. Um, so I'm sure I'm sure if it can be done, he can get it done. Um, but again, it's, it's the National Football League. Anybody can lose to anybody on any given day, right? I don't care who you are. It's the National Football League, and and um, these coaches are extremely smart, right? I don't care how how bad it looks like their team is. And these players are extremely talented, right? So um, I think going into the playoffs, um, for any team, it's, it's wide open. You get in and then shit make plays and try to try to uh, try to get to the next one. So so what are you telling us here, uh, Marcus? Like you, well, what, what's the Steelers gonna do? That's uh, that's what I'm, I'm trying to figure out here. Are, are they are they pours for a postseason run? Are they gonna be the team that we saw in the first? 11 weeks or are they going to be the team that's been, you know, one in three um, in in the last four, obviously they got a 
huge win against Indianapolis this weekend. But uh, well, well, how, how do you grade this team moving to playoffs? Um, if I was to call it, I, I would say they definitely get it done. Right? I have the Steelers winning the Super Bowl. Again, that's just me personally. Um, but again, you got injuries. This is football. Anybody can lose anybody any given day. People go down every game. You know, um, I think it's going to come down to Big Ben doing what Big Ben does. And uh, he's really good at it. Um, I think with them giving him uh, a little more leeway, um, he can always make magic. You know, and that's we've been seeing that for years. He can make magic. The receiving core that he has around him now, um, everybody is is uh, is eating, right? Everybody has their their hand in the pile, and um, I think with that situation, you, your chances are better, right? In our, in our situation back then, AB AB took on a good amount of the load, right? Uh, whether we liked it or not, AB took on a good amount of the load. And um, if, if AB didn't get a good a, a good amount of the load, we was gonna hear it, right? Everybody was gonna hear it because AB being AB, right? He has he has standards for himself, right? And if he if if we're not meeting those if if those numbers aren't meeting those standards, it's a problem. You get what I'm saying? Um, you can say that's a bad thing, but again, that could be why he he could go down as as one of the greats. You know what I'm saying? Definitely one of the best I've ever seen do it. Um, so again, if, if AB isn't getting balls, it's going to be a problem, right? You're going to hear from AB on the sideline. OC is going to hear it. Head coach is going to hear Everybody's going to hear it, right? But at the same time, you praise him on the other end because, you know what I'm saying? He, he's going to be one of those greats and you got to respect him for it. Absolutely. You know, I look at the last six seasons in Pittsburgh, only Jerry Rice. You look at you, you. You compare the six best years of Jerry. You compare to the six best years of AB. They're equal. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that he's one of the all-time greats. Now he may not be, you know, doesn't have the the size and the speed that Moss had, or maybe the the explosive ability of To and stuff like that. But um, or even the hands like Chris Carter or some of these guys. But the objective of football is to catch the ball and score TDs and his production, he, he, he's met that. So you make a, a lot of good points. Um, going back here to you, you bounced around some of the other places in the league in Chicago uh, before now, but um, talk to us about some of the things that you're doing now, um, being removed as pro. We understand that you're doing a lot of things as in terms of the business world and the business aspects. Um, what's, what's the current project that you're working on at the moment? Um, I closed actually yesterday on a, on a new home, um, up in Northern Arizona. I run that as an Airbnb. So I'm, I'm mainly in real estate. Um, and, um, I've primarily been a buy and hold investor, right? So I, I purchase, I do all the, all the acquisitions myself, uh, purchase, I, I renovate when needed to, but purchase and hold for the long haul. So, um, I purchase apartment buildings. I purchase mobile home parks. Um, just newly getting into Airbnb space. Um, but for me, it's been uh, trying to grow in, in the real estate space, trying to be uh, more vertically integrated in real estate and, uh, and um, to, to optimize, of course, profits and to be able to um, share that knowledge, of course, throughout social media, my friends and family to help them of course, can go on in, uh, in real estate to make some money. Absolutely, for sure. We all got to eat um, there as well. Talk to us a, um, a little bit about that because I think, you know, there, there's there's times where you're an athlete, you're retired from whichever respected sport that you're from, and some of these guys don't have the financial literacy or, or that type of knowledge and stuff like that. And then for some reason they... they we, we, we see them flat fall flat um, on, on their butt. But talk to us a little bit about that and, and how and the importance of it. You know, um, some of these guys you see that doing commercials and endorsements and things like that, they go ahead and, and blow it in, in different functions and events that we can't speak on right now <laughs> on air. But um, talk to us about the importance of that and, and what's your mission to kind of educate people um, out there in the Arizona area for that. Uh, that's that's exactly it. What you just said. I need to, 
I need to um, educate these young men that are getting lump sums, right? We get all this money. Um, a lot of us aren't from money and we don't know how to deal with it, right? I got drafted. I got a check for um, uh, just over half a million dollars, right? And I'm, I'm a college kid, right? They give me a check for half a million dollars and I'm ready to play, right? I go buy this, I go buy that. I look up uh, a year later, that half a million is gone. Right, so I blew I blew the whole half a million on nothing really. My truck, I have my truck. Um, that's that's all I really had to show for it. Um, but outside of that, I, I blew my cash. Right, you come back, you get paid. We only get paid during the season um, in the NFL, so we get our game checks, get paid after every game, some biweekly. Um, but we start playing again. I get all those checks from the season, right, and I look up and a good amount of that is gone, right? So money just kind of, it feels like it's disappearing, but it's all these little charges that we're making that we're not thinking about, right? Like, oh, my mom need a hundred dollars, let me, oh, you need a you need a couple hundred dollars, let me, oh, my sister needs something, let me hit that for her. You know what I'm saying? Oh, let's hit the club, get a bottle, you know what I'm saying? Get a couple bottles, you know what I mean? And all that stuff just start adding up real quick and um, look up and it's gone. So after a year or two of that, I'm like, bro, I need answers. I need, I need to do something. I talked to my brother. I have an older brother. His name is Marquise. Um, and spoke to him. He put me on this guy named Grant Cardone, who was doing big things in real estate. I started looking into him, watching his videos, reading his books. Um, ended up reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That led me in a whole nother direction. Started reading and listening to podcasts and educating myself. Um, and then that year, I jumped into multifamily, ended up purchasing two apartment buildings, right? And then just kept climbing from there. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm looking to grow the portfolio, of course, but the education piece is, is what's most important for me, right? I wanna, I wanna educate those around me. I wanna be able to educate um, these young guys that are getting into the league, um, that are going through what I went through, right? Um, I want, to, I want to be a resource, ultimately. I want to be a resource to be able to, um, one, help those guys get started, um, and two, be an be a open book for them um, to, to, to keep them going, to keep them growing, to keep leading them in the right direction. Um, so I'm working on a book right now. Um, hopefully that'll be here March, April-ish, and uh, it'll be available on my Instagram. Um, follow me at, at Tay Wheaton, T-A-E, Wheaton. Um, and then on Facebook, Marcus Wheaton. So I'm working on that book now. And that'll be, um, again, just, just spreading the knowledge, ground level knowledge that I feel like everyone should know, um, that I feel like can help get everyone started. Um, and then from there, I'll figure out um, how else I can, I can uh, touch some lives. Absolutely. I, I think that's, that's, that's a great point that you make being able to try to be there to impact lives and stuff like that. Um, I definitely got to be able to get that book there. So uh, I, 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 got I got you um, on that, but um, very inspiring story, very inspiring story on that part and, and, and best of luck to you as you continue to achieve those endeavors uh, for sure. Um, one of the fun things I like to do with a lot of my guests is um, this is the part in the activity where we just try to get into the personal lives of you guys just off, off, off of business or, or on the field stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna ask you a few guys here. It's it, The game is easy. It's called underrated, overrated. I'm just going to list a few wideouts, which obviously that's 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 a position that you know very well. So um, it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna start off with uh, Tyreek Hill. Underrated. You, you need a, you need a, uh, you need me to explain or we just answer? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Look, look, the, the man is, is, is impressive. Um, the speed, the speed kills, man. It, it, this double coverage, triple coverage, you, you can't do nothing, but he, he's special. I, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people don't, don't realize, track guys know. If you ran track in the past and you look at some numbers, you understand, right? But I don't think a lot of people realize how, how fast the kid is. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's off the charts, it's unreal. So it, with that being said, underrated. Mike Evans. Mm, 
<laughs> uh, let me ask you: We talking this year? We talking full career? We talking? Uh, we're talking entire career, entire career. Underrated. Why is why is that so? I feel like his his what what he's able to do, right? First of all, he's 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 massive, right? His hands are massive. He can catch the ball, right? I don't I don't know what his catch radius is, but I I've seen I'm I'm saying that specifically off of catches that catches that I've seen him make, right? Yeah. So that my answer is specifically off of catches that I've seen him make. Numbers wise, I can't call it, but catches that I've seen him make with him being such a, uh, a red zone threat. Yeah. That, that's what I was going to say. He's a huge, huge red, red zone threat. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's probably one of the reasons why. Um, a guy that you face twice a year in, in, in the division, in the AFC North, um, AJ Green. Oh, man. I got to say it. AJ Green overrated. Oh, really? You know, rated it, man. It, again, it's my opinion. I, I think the injuries have, have, have has caused that. Um, I think without those injuries, absolutely, he, he continues to do what, what he's done early in his career. But with all those injuries, I, I think he's having trouble bouncing back um, for whatever reason. Could be mental, could be um, the injury itself, um, could be how, he, how they're using him in the system. There's so many factors that go into it, you, it it's hard to call. Um, but, yeah, that's where I'm at. He, he came to a, a division opponent for, of you guys later on in his career, but um, what about Steve Smith Sr.? I, I think he gets the respect he deserves. I, I think he, he, he is what he is, and they know what he is. And, and that, the physicality, um, the, 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 the mentality that he has playing the game, I, I think is, is different from any receiver I've seen. Um, you can probably compare him to Heinz Ward um, when it comes to phys physicality, um, but the man is, is so strong and physical and he plays that way, right? He plays that way throughout his game. There's no part of his game that isn't physical, right? So I think he's in a whole, um, uh, a different league of his own. I, I see what you did. Classic Pittsburgh uh, uh, guy, not giving any answers for a Raven guy. <laughs> I, I see what you just did there. Um, let's talk about some of these younger guys now. Um, DK Metcalf. He, he is what he is. And I think everybody respects it. Um, definitely underrated. Again, his, his numbers are insane. His size is insane. His speed is insane. His, he's insane. Um, I think he'll he'll be going forward one of those guys. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I mean by those guys. He'll be one of those guys. He'll be um, one of the league's best. Currently, uh, as it stands right now, who who's the best? Who's the best receiver in the NFL? Um, in your estimation, you know we got guys like Julio Jones. You've got a, a fan of mine that I'm 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 very of a fan of DeAndre Hopkins. You've got, you know, Michael Thomas out in New Orleans. Um, you've got um, Stefan Diggs, excellent route runner in, in Buffalo. You've got Devontae Adams. So it's, 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 a, it's a long list. And again, there's, there are a lot of factors that go into what we see on Sunday, right? There's a ton of factors that go into what we see on Sunday. Um, but just from what we see on Sunday, in my opinion, you got to go D hop. Right. And, and luckily he's here now in Arizona. Right. I'm gonna go check them out. Um, I have a couple of boys playing over there. So um, I was excited to get to get to watch them do what they're doing. Um, uh, but of course, COVID messed that up. But I think with with D hop doing what he's done with the quarterbacks that he's had. Right. And continuing to be consistent right? continuing to make insane catches continuing to put up insane numbers um, and playing at a, at a high level all the time. Um, and, and, and my opinion, it's a no brainer. I, I, I agree. The man demands it. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Catch radius is 
best hands in the league. Yeah, that, that, from my estimation, um, right. you, you got you got to tell him to hook it, hook us up here. You you got to got to have him here on the show for sure. So uh, I'm depending on you to kind of hook that up for us. I got you. I will see what I can do. <laughs> for sure. Uh, last year, uh, lastly here before I can let you leave, I kind of noticed the hat, the hat up there. What, what, what's that saying? Is that is there any significance behind that? Uh, yeah. So this is. Um, I, I went to Mountain Point. Um, grew up in South Phoenix. Um, somebody I met in South Phoenix, went to high school with, and um, has been one of my closest friends since. Um, this is his clothing line. His name is Will Clay. He runs track. Um, he's an Olympian. Um, he's silver and bronze medal Olympias. Um, but the kid, uh, I feel like what he's been able to do has helped me, of course, get to where I've been able to get to. His mindset, his drive, his, um, his, uh, um, work ethic. Literally, literally everything about this kid, if you met him, you, you would agree. Um, but, um, just seeing what he's been able to do and, and, and feeding off of him throughout my, um, my time growing up has, has helped me, of course, get to where I've, where I've gotten now. Um, and I, I can say that about my, my, the rest of my close group of friends. I have four or five guys that I speak to. We have a mastermind every Sunday. Um, and we talk, we talk every Sunday and, and go over, we hold each other accountable. Um, we're focused on growth um, in relationships and, 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 and in our, uh, our field of work um, and spiritually, right? We call it the full 360. So I think, I think for all the young people that are looking to, to chase something, right? Looking to grow as men um, and young women I think it starts with those people you have around you. And luckily I've been able to um, feed off of those guys since we were young. And we've kind of be all, we've been all feeding off each other and growing together. Um, so shout out to my guys um, and the full 360 boys. Um, I feel like they played a, played a huge part in, in who I am today. Yeah, for sure. Is you are they say you are who you surround yourself around so absolutely so elevate elevate worldwide on uh instagram y'all go grab y'all a hat um yeah it's will clay will clay's clothing line absolutely man it's been a pleasure here um getting the opportunity to chop it up with you um enlighten us with, with some of your knowledge some of your past experiences and your play on the field um but lastly before we you know we we, we, we cut ties here um, just share with uh, some of our audience where they can find you or even somewhere where they can just go ahead and, and connect with you. Um, Instagram. Instagram is, is where I'm at mainly. That's where I spend most of my, my social media time. Instagram, T is in Tom, A-E, Wheaton, T-A-E, Wheaton. And then on Facebook, I'll have some stuff available. Um, and that's Marcus Wheaton, M-A-R-K-U-S-W-H-E-A-T-O-N. Um, I'll have some stuff I'll be documenting my, my journey, my real estate journey on Instagram. So if y'all want to see that and y'all want to learn, um, and then of course I'll have the book coming uh, pretty soon. Yes. Looking forward to it being a New York bestseller, but uh, it's going to take some time for that. Uh, appreciate <laughs> it. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure here. Likewise, I appreciate you having me. <laughs>